Hey guys, it's Justin. Um, it is July 30th. I know I haven't been on here in a while and I just want to give you a quick update. Uh, I did install my 61 millimeter um, supercharger pulley unexpectedly. Um, I was getting my bumper, my bumper painted and you know, I figured, you know, since the car was already going to be sitting here, I might as well try to install it because I had it in the car. So I ended up installing that 61 millimeter pulley. Um, and, you know, like looking at the pulley, you can't go smaller than that 61 millimeter. Um, it, it started out as a 63 millimeter. And what they did was they machined it down to 61. Um, and if you go any thinner, you're probably gonna break through the metal um, and or it won't be stable enough. Um, so there's really no way to go smaller on the pulley. So 61 is pretty much the smallest you can get for this um, VT supercharger. So I've had it installed about a week now. I got it about two weeks ago. I got it on like the 18th. Um, so it's been installed about a week now, no problems with it, no issues at all. So um, I didn't take a video of it because I wasn't planning on installing it right then and there. But I, what I did do is I took pictures. So on my next video that I do, I'm gonna show you the pictures and kind of walk you through the installation if you plan on doing it. For the fourth gen guys, if you already have the supercharger installed, it actually might be a lot easier to do it while it's on the car if you don't have like a vice grip at home. For everyone else, it probably will be easier to install it before you know you put the supercharger on a car because um you need space on the side of the supercharger to be able to turn you know the eight bolts on the four gens we have a coolant reservoir that you can just remove and you know it's a lot of space so you can get in there and turn it that might not be the case i know on the mazda 6 there's the abs system that's in a way i'm not sure about all the generations because i haven't really looked at the configurations um but definitely uh it's one of those where the crank it's so stiff that it helped me be able to break free the bolts because it was holding that supercharger from spinning. Um, that being said, I'm just here to give you guys an update. I'm not going to do a super long video today. Um, other than the, uh, you know, the supercharger pulley installation, I did all my fluids right before I did that. So I changed the uh, rear diff fluid. By the way, um, the fluid looked brand new. So if you're going to get your rear diff fluid changed at the dealership, you're being ripped off. When I opened that up, the fluid looked literally like brand new in the rear diff because the Mazda 3 all-wheel drive system is mainly a front-wheel drive system and it only activates the rear differential when it's needed, which is most time you're not launching a car or driving the snow all the time. So it rarely gets activated. So the, uh, the fluid was clear. There was no need to change it. Um, I changed the transmission. I did a drain and fill on the transmission fluid, which took about three and a half quarts that made a big difference on my shifting so the car shifted a lot smoother once i uh, changed that out less rev hang um so i do recommend you guys change your or just at least do a drain and fill on your transmission fluid i know some people like daniel they dropped their pan you know cleaned out all of the the uh you know the metal shards he had because he's very hard on this car um i'm not that hard on my car and plus you know i don't have as many miles as daniel so just a drain and fill was enough for me to feel the difference so uh, i would say roughly every 30 to forty thousand miles if you can just do like you know a three quart drain and fill it'll increase the life and the longevity of your transmission so um other than you know me changing the fluids doing the you know the smaller pulley another thing that you know i've been talking with our little small community we have of people who have it, the supercharging chart uh supercharger installed um there's you know three tuners right now that are working on our superchargers and you know everyone's having issues you know they can't figure it out well they can they can figure it out but they just don't have all the maps right now to um to get our cars tuned the way they want to because there's so many maps that mazda has that we don't have access to yet um and matt wilson um from orange virus tuning who is now um you know creating a software this vf software we're waiting for that to be released so the tuners have more access to um more more maps for our tuning um, i would like to get a transmission map because i feel like the car the uh the torque limits are too low and I'm noticing that on my shifts that uh, it's a little it's slower than it's, it's sluggish. It's more slow than it was when I was in a. 
Um, so I think that has to do with the torque limits. Um, besides that issue, like I said, there's only like three tuners working on it and no one has like a finalized tune yet. Daniel has been the main guy who's been, you know, used as a guinea pig and they're going back and forth and, you know, trying different things on his car. And, you know, there's another, there's another two tuners that are also doing it. So what everyone in our community is kind of doing, we're kind of, you know, comparing air fuel ratios and timing and seeing who's got the best results as far as like, you know, getting the highest timing or the leanest air fuel ratios without getting um, knock or uh, ignition timing being pulled. So normally cars run about, you know, 11 to one when they're on a boosted ap application. Our car, yeah, so sorry, it, the battery froze for a second. So normally um, cars run like 11 to one on boosted applications. But for our car, because the direct injection system is such high pressure, it cools the engine a lot better. Um, and also the header design and all that, just the way the car is set up on the Atkins cycle, everything works very efficiently. So we can run leaner air fuel ratios um, pretty you know, easy compared to other cars. So what we've all been finding out is that the car does not need to be at that typical 11 to one we've been seeing guys accidentally run in the 13s with the supercharger on boosted and the car was not pulling timing and the timing was relatively high for boost so we're right now we're trying to find the limits and with our ecu if it you know it's very sensitive to knock so if it it's if it feels knock or hears knock or the the vibration um, it pulls time in immediately. Our car is very good at protecting itself because I ran it on a 91 tune and I didn't put an octane booster in there. So the car was running on 19 degrees timing and with boost, which is very high, and the car didn't blow up because the car is smart enough to pull timing. So, you know, I don't know why I took that risk, but I did and the car didn't blow up. So I was like, okay. Well, if the car was able to save itself with the 91 tune for my NA, my 91 NA tune with the supercharger on, I was like, let me put some octane booster in there and see if I can bring that ignition um, timing pull down. So I went and bought VP racing uh, octane booster, a uh, seven point booster. I put it in a 12 gallon tank. So I brought it down um, the boost to, you know, five octane. So it came out to 96 octane, ran that in the car. And when I ran that 96 octane in the car for the first time on the NA tune, um, the timing went back down to, uh, you know, no pull, like no knock. Um, so it went back up in timing, but it didn't go back to the 19 degrees because the car is always learning. So I got no knock, but the ignition timing was still lower than it was when I first put it on the car. Um, and as the car starts to learn and adapt, it starts to add the timing back in. So it started like, you know, it went back down to this, it's adjustment. It made it like 13, 14 degrees. Next couple pulls, it went 15, 16. Next couple pulls after that, 17, 18. So, and then the car started to pull timing again because it got it to its max timing. So this car is like a self-learning ECU. So it will keep adding timing until the car knocks and then it'll pull back and store at what you know um amount of timing that it starts to pull and that'll be like your set timing and so like i said the car was still pulling a little bit after it found its max timing and uh so i knew it was going to go back down to right you know 15 like 15 to 17 degrees in there so anyways i um told my tuner what i did and asked him to pull three degrees of timing and he pulled three degrees of timing, put the tune back on the car. The car ran better because the, you know, the, the the limits that I wanted to run for timing were lowered. So the car didn't try to go up that high and then ran back down. Um, so, and then I was like, okay, well, it's running right where I wanted to, but this is on 96 octane. So then what I had my tuner Ralph do is go back in and lower the timing one more degree. So I lowered the timing four degrees 
I'm not going to give you the exact timing. So it's, I ru it's roughly lowered four degrees because I don't want to give out, you know, Ralph's secrets. And our, we're running a much leaner air fuel ratio than the standard, you know, supercharger tune. And we found out that, you know, we could probably run even leaner if we wanted to. But I'm going to keep it right where it's at. And I'm just going to work on um, manipulating the timing. And hopefully, eventually, there's a, you know, a transmission fix with this new software that's coming out um that being said you know um, i've been comparing notes with other members of our supercharger farm mainly daniel um but there's you know a couple other guys too that are working with different tuners and we're all still trying to find the limits of this uh you know supercharger build and with the software and see what the limits can be for as far as air fuel ratio and timing so we can get the max power out of it um, and me and Daniel both have been in situations where we're at full throttle and our air fuel ratios are like lean, as lean as 13.5 with no ignition, um, you know, timing pull. So we know the car can run at super high RPM, super lean and not pull timing with a decent amount of timing already in it. So we don't know the limits yet, but we're going to keep you know, pushing them. But right now I know Daniel's having a fuel pressure issue up top. And I know his car, his rail pressure cracks at a roughly 230 bar, whereas on my newer fortune, it cracks at around 250 bar. So, you know, what I've been doing is just finding ways to um, increase fuel pressure. And we don't know what the exact solution is yet but i know on my old um audi we used to have to change the pressure relief valve valve on a high pressure fuel uh fuel rail but with daniel's car and my car i don't think there is a high pressure fuel rail relief valve the only one i found is the low pressure relief valve and so what i end up doing is finding out that most of the low pressure fuel pumps all have the same internals except uh, most of them have a different um, low pressure fuel pump relief valve. I'm not sure if this is going to do the trick and because I don't know if there's another relief valve somewhere where it cracks open, but this is the only one and I don't know what this one's rated is. This is for the turbo model, so I figured it should have a higher pressure valve since we all use the same um, fuel injectors, but I don't know yet because I haven't tested it, but I bought this for about 50 bucks and my plan on is if Daniel you know, can't figure out another solution for increasing rail pressure and keeping it steady up at the higher RPM. I'm going to send them this and hopefully this is the fix we've all been looking for, for the, uh, the fuel pressure rail to keep the pressure up so it doesn't crack open. I don't need it because I'm at 250 bar and the newer cars won't need it because they all have the same rail, uh, low pressure fuel pump relief valve as me, but the older cars might need this, but I'm not sure yet guys. So don't quote me on it. So that's all. I just wanted to update you guys on what I'm doing. Um, the next video um, that I'm going to show you guys is actually just pictures. And it's going to be the uh, the pulley installation. Um, I took pictures and I'll just walk you through it. If you guys already have the supercharger on the car, I'll show you how I got the pulley off without removing the belt off the tensioner. Well, I did remove the belt off the, the pulley, but not completely off and taking the wheel off and everything. I didn't have to go down to the crank and you know, pull attention or back. So that's going to be the next video. It'll just be pictures and, and an instructional video, how to install a pulley if it's already on the car guys. So that's it for now. Um, it will be up in a few days and I just want to give a shout out to Amy, you know, um, for getting me this supercharger. Um, obviously Daniel as always, because without him, none of this would have been possible for any of us. And, you know, uh, Ralph, I appreciate you. I know I'm a pain in the ass, but we're going to get this tuned out in. All right, guys. Talk to you later.